Hi, I'm Adam in Wales and this is my board gaming vlog and today I've been relegated from my normal spot in my gaming room into my front room, sat at my computer looking at the spiel uh, list because what we're talking about today is my um, the, the 10 publishers that I'm most excited to go and, uh, and look at their games as a, as a consumer, as a purchaser, as a player of games um, at the convention because there's far too many games to put into a list of my 10 most anticipated games, and I know a lot of other reviewers will be doing that anyway. So we're looking at the 10 publishers whose booths I'm most excited to go and visit. Now, Essence Spiel is the, the biggest board game convention in the world, rivaled only by Gen Con in America. Um, there's about 150,000 people will visit over that four-day period. Um, so it's pretty massive, and it goes on in October. Uh, this is 2016, this video. Um, at this convention, there will be many, many publishers from all around the world. I've visited the convention on three previous occasions. Um, the first time was in 2012. Uh, at that time, I went as a, a game player. I went alone, and I went with the probably the worst cold that I've ever had. Uh, so I was in Germany, unable to speak German, and sort of leaning into people at the train station and whispering, Can you tell me how to get? Spiel. And people were sort of shying away from me. It was a very, very difficult four days. Uh, and, and I can't honestly say that it was any fun. <laughs> and it was very expensive. But, but I got a taste for it. And I got a feel for what it was all about. And I returned two years later in 2014. And this time I had a lot of meetings with publishers to pitch my own designs. Um, and I followed up again in 2015 for a similar experience. And I know that in 2016, so in, in three weeks time now, I'm going to be having a similar experience again. I have many meetings lined up. And in fact, I've sat in this seat at my computer uh, pretty much for the last month. Uh, producing prototypes on the computer, laying out graphics, changing things, uh, and doing an awful lot of emailing and, and speaking to an awful lot of publishers uh, to try and establish who's going to be willing to look at my games, who they're going to suit, and that sort of thing. But that's not what we're here to talk about. What we're here to talk about is which publishers I'm excited about looking at their games. And we've got 10 of them to look at. The first company that I wanted to discuss with you is Z-Man Games. Now, Z-Man Games has been around for pretty much the whole duration of this boom in German-style games, European games. Uh, and so their, their, their name, Z-Man, uh, or I would prefer to call it Z-Man as an Englishman, but I always hear it called Z-Man. So Z-Man uh, was set up by Zev Schlavinger uh, and later became combined with Philosophia and Plaid Hat and formed F2Z Entertainment, which is, is now in talks about becoming part of the Asmodee sort of empire. Um, but... Over the years, Z-Man has, has produced games like Carcassonne, or at least distributed and, and, and published in different countries, games like Carcassonne and Pandemic, alongside a massively diverse sort of range of games. Now, I, I don't find Z-Man to have a particular sort of identity uh, or, or sort of personality in terms of what their games are, but what Z-Man does have is a mark of quality. If you see Z-Man on the box, then generally you know you're going to have a professionally produced game uh, produced by a company with, with a, a real wealth of experience. And so usually these are quality products. And at Essen 2016, Z-Man has, uh, they're, they're continuing this, uh, promoting their, their Carcassonne and Pandemic lines. So we have Carcassonne Amazonas. I don't know if I'll go for that. I have several copies of Carcassonne already. Uh, Carcassonne South Seas was very good in the same range as Carcassonne Amazonas, this around the world sort of thing. But it's very close to Carcassonne. And I also have the two-player Carcassonne, the castle. So I, I'm not sure that I need another Carcassonne. Pandemic Iberia, same sort of idea, an alternate version of Pandemic with a particular location. Um, that one I am interested in. Uh, I wonder if it's, it's, it's a limited run, okay, so it's a single print run or so they say. Um, so I do wonder whether that's what's spurring my interest, knowing that if I don't get it now, I may not be able to get it. Um, I haven't ever picked up Pandemic uh, so far, although I've enjoyed it on the times that I've played it. But I really, really like Pandemic The Cure that's behind me here. And Pandemic The Cure has a new expansion coming out at Essen this year, Pandemic The Cure Experimental Meds. 
Um, and so that really does have me interested. And that's the main reason I'll be visiting the booth. A couple of years ago, I would have been extremely excited by a feast for Odin because then I was playing far heavier sort of Euro games. And now I tend to find that sort of game, um, I don't get that much opportunity to play it. Um, and I understand that a feast for Odin is even heavier than Agricola and um, or at Labora and the Harv. And uh, I'm not sure that I'm going to get that to the table as attractive a prospect as that game seems. Number nine on my list is Jolly Thinkers. Now, Jolly Thinkers is a small company that appears to be based out of Hong Kong. Um, I first came across them with the games Pick a Pig and Pick a Dog, which are two lovely little speed matching games, puzzly type games, ideal for playing with children, um, but also can play with adults. I play them in a sort of party setting. You combine the two games and you can play it with far more players. I think it's an excellent little product, uh, Pick a Pig and Pick a Dog. And in fact, there's Pick a Polar Bear and Pick a Seal as well, which I don't have. Um, but I did pick up B Bucket King 3D, largely on the basis of the artwork. Um, but not just that. It's, it's a sort of weird game where you stack these plastic cups into a pyramid. And then you play it similar to a trick-taking game, but you're trying to knock out the cups from other people's pyramids by playing certain tricks. Um, so that's a, that's a fun game by Stefan Dora. Uh, and it's a reworking of a previous game called Bucket King, but with the added artwork from that Pick a Pig, Pick a Dog series. And that's exactly what they've done at Essen 2016. They've taken an old game uh, called Dead Man's Treasure by Rainer Knizia and reproduced it as Fruit Spy using similar sort of art style to their previous series of games. And that in itself is enough to attract me. Rainer Knizia, simple gameplay, and this brilliant sort of art style. And that's a running theme that is, is happening at Essen Spiel 2016, is that a lot of games are getting a facelift. So what would apparently be a new game actually turns out to be a game that was released, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, uh, and, and they're just getting a facelift and a new name. So we have... Um, Captain Carcass coming out, replacing Dead Man's Draw. Uh, Dead Man's Draw was an excellent little game. Captain Carcass has beautiful artwork by Bombix, I believe. Um, Rent a Hero is a reworking of Seventh Hero. Um, and so Rent a Hero is coming out by Yellow Games. Um, there's a new version of uh, Sushi Zokim Gokulwok. Sushi Zokim Gokulwok is one of my uh, favourite dice games, or Rainer Knizzi game, very similar to Picomino or Heckmech. Um, and this game is being released with a sort of superhero theme by Gigamic. So this is a sort of running theme throughout the convention. Uh, I don't know what this means, whether there's just been a lack of ideas around or whether it's, it's just that, that thing of, well, these old ideas have now, their rights have reverted back to the original designers and, and they haven't been seen for a while. So let's get hold of those old classic uh, sort of good games that maybe have been a bit forgotten and bring them back. But it seems to be happening quite a lot. Now, Jolly Thinkers... Uh, was based out of, from what I can tell online, uh, based out of a Hong Kong board game cafe. And that brings us on to our next entry. Edition Spielwieser, I, I may be mispronouncing that, I don't know. This is a new publisher uh, with their first game. Uh, and it's, it's a board game cafe in... Um, Germany, I believe, that, 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 that has now started to produce games. And so they're producing first an Uwe Rosenberg game uh, called Cottage Garden that uses Tetra-style pieces, tessellating them, placing them on the board, slotting them in in a Tetra-style fashion. Um, and it looks similar to something like Patchwork. Now, from what I've read online, apparently there are very substantial differences from Patchwork. So it's by no means a four-player version of Patchwork. But... I, I mean, if you, if you, I recently did a, a top 10 tile layer mechanisms and tessellation was number one. Underused. We don't see much of that, those Tetra style pieces. And Uwe Rosenberg is single handedly trying to redress the balance with his games Patchwork and now Cottage Garden. And A Feast for Odin also has elements of that as well. Um, so I'm very interested to see what this company comes up with. The fact that they're working with Uwe Rosenberg and that he has faith in them means that I have faith in them because Uwe Rosenberg is, is no fool. In fact, he's a genius. So, uh, so we'll see what it's like. We'll see what they come up with. But Cottage Garden, I really have my fingers crossed that this is going to be something special. Number seven is Hook and Friends, or Hutch and Friends, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Now this is a company where I, which I've always enjoyed visiting over the last couple of years when I've been going to Essen. And uh, actually, they, they produce games like um, Keyflower and Calus Magna Carta in the past. 
Uh, I think this year they have some involvement with the new uh, Key to Key to London, Key to the City London, which is a, a new sort of reworked version of Key Flower um, from the same designers. But these are the sort of heavier games that they produce. Uh, the majority of their games are children's style um, or family style games. Um, Terra is a, is an excellent trivia game, and I believe in, they've got a, a new version of Terra, but it's a, it's only German language, so so I can't really pursue that one. But they're also bringing back the GIF series, and they released a couple of these games over the last year or so. And there's two more: there's um, Zurz and Saar. These are excellent abstract strategy games, really, really good. So it's really nice to see them all coming back and finally be able to get my hands on the ones that I'm missing in my collection. Um, the other games that, uh, that that sort of attracted me, there's a game called uh, Turia, which looks very, very attractive, maybe a sort of mid-weight strategy game. And then a game called Imagine. Now, Imagine looks like, uh, similar to something like Concept, where you're trying to create ideas that people have to guess what you're trying to, trying to sort of illustrate, but you're doing it using transparent cards that you lay on top of each other with various different symbols on the cards. So you're using this deck of uh, sort of acetate cards and putting them together, stacking them, you should be able to create all sorts of different sort of icon type images that represent different things uh, and then other people guess them, I, I guess in a style similar to something like Pictionary or as I mentioned that, 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 that game from Repost um, called Concept that was so popular a couple of years ago. So that looks fascinating. Um, I'd really like to have a look at that and see, see, see what, what that's all about. The next booth that I'll be sure to be visiting is the Pegasus Spiel booth and Eggert Spiel. They, they, they commonly work together, those two companies. This is a German publisher, again, been around for a long time. Again, has a very diverse range of games, um, often in that sort of middleweight family style German games, but not always. Sometimes they can go a little heavier or a little lighter. I must admit, I don't have an awful lot of Pegasus games in my collection. Um, I don't really know why that is. And one I particularly love is Camel Up. That's, um, that's spielt as Yara's winner. And a game that I'm excited to see at Essen this year is Camel Up the Card Game uh, by Pegasus. I've no idea how this is going to work. Presumably it's going to be very similar to uh, the, the original board game, but it would be nice to have it in a little portable package. Um, so I'm interested to see that one. I also noticed there's a Coal Baron card game from Pegasus. Now, Coal Baron, a few years ago, I got on a bit of a Wolfgang Kramer, Michael Kiesling sort of kick. I was buying a bunch of their games, trying out anything I could find. But Coal Baron kind of passed me by because I found the theme a little bit boring. Then recently, uh, living in Wales, as I do, I went to a coal mine and we and had a sort of tour underground, going down into the mine. I thought, well, oh, this would be a great theme for a game. And I wondered about designing a game like this. And then Coal Baron came back and I thought, that's a theme that previously I'd been dismissing as being boring. But actually now I'm thinking what a great game that would make. And now I'm very intrigued to go back and revisit Coal Baron. Um, but Coal Baron, the card game, is a similar sort of thing, again, in a portable package. Um, so I'm interested to see that one. Uh, the other game that jumped out at me from Pegasus was a game called, uh, I think it's called Chariot Race. And it's by Matt Leacock, who uh, I talked about previously with Pandemic and Pandemic the Cure, the designer of those games. This is a dice game. And that seems to be the other thing that Matt Leacock does very well with Roll Through the, um, roll through the Ages, um, the Bronze Age and the Iron Age. He's a, he's a very good dice game sort of designer. And here we have a chariot race using dice. I don't know, that combination and Matt Leacock in a small package from Pegasus, that says to me it's going to be a good game. So I'm looking out for that one too. Blue Orange is always a company that I'm going to visit their booth, always. Uh, I mean, these are top quality products. Yes, very much in the light level, you know, almost children's games, some of them branching them to the slightly light, the, the, the light family games. Um, but I love that style of game. Um, really good quality components. Um, Battle Sheep is a tremendous abstract game with these lovely poker chips that really click together. Um, Goblet was uh, Blue Orange's first game and, and Goblet, they sort of self-published, uh, manufactured all these wooden pieces themselves, thousands of copies and sold something like 10,000 copies in a year, went on to sell a million over a decade. So this was the foundation of the company, but they had massive success with that game Spot It. Um, called Dobble in Europe, which sold millions and millions of copies and later was uh, sold on to Asmodee. 
to produce. Now, at Essen this year, firstly, I want to get Dr. Eureka, which I overlooked last year somehow. And um, so Dr. Eureka, that's, that's been around for a year. Uh, but top that, uh, this, I mean, it, yeah, it looks like a children's game, but it, it's similar to sort of Speed Cups. And I really like that game, Speed Cups from Amigo. Uh, racing to complete the little puzzle and, and, and first one to complete it gets the points. Simple stuff, but I like those puzzly sort of games. The other one uh, that I think looks interesting is um, King Domino uh, by Bruno Catala, which is a simple tile laying, uh, again, family weight tile laying, but as it, you'd expect from Bruno Catala, it's got a really nice little mechanism about how we draft these tiles, how we select the tiles to bring them into our own little um, collection of tiles, which we then lay out to build up our kingdom, our King Domino. Um, so those look great. Always happy to go to the Blue Orange uh, booth. Nice and colourful and big. Um, yeah, excited to go to see them. Right in the centre of the convention hall, there is a massive yellow booth with numerous children, really young children, all playing loads of games. Brilliant games, beautifully produced components. Now, over the first couple of years that I was at Essen, I didn't pay much attention to this booth because it was very clearly aimed at the younger crowd. And all the games came in these yellow boxes like this one, Super Rhino. Now this is one that sort of crossed over to a slightly, uh, you know, adults enjoyed playing it as well, stacking these, these cards and, um, you know, hoping that the tower doesn't fall. Really good little game. But last year, they, there was a surprise when Haber suddenly produced some sort of strategy games, particularly Karuba which was nominated for the Spiel des Jahres, and Adventureland, which I recently picked up in a trade. Now, I wasn't expecting much from Adventureland, but it turned out I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and so I was excited to see that Essen Spiel 2016 there's going to be an expansion, which definitely I'm going to have a look at. Now, Adventureland, um, you can... The rules are, are the same, but there's three different scenarios that you can play, which basically change what the objective of the game is. And, and, and the feel is very different between those three scenarios. And I believe the expansion adds in another three possible scenarios using the same basic engine. This is a Wolfgang Kramer game uh, and Michael Kiesling. Uh, I mean, what Haber keeps doing is working with brilliant designers. Karuba was by Rudiger Dorn. And they also have um, a new, maybe one or two, I'm not sure, but there's a new game. I'm trying to see what it's called. Meduris. Maduris, designed by Stefan Dora and Ralph Zerlind, who, who designed uh, Finca and Animals on Board, which I really enjoyed from Pegasus recently. Um, so they're still working with top designers uh, to produce family weight sort of strategy games, which is right up my street. Um, so I'm looking forward to this one, Maduris and the Adventureland expansion. Yellow was originally a French company, now also has a US division. But Yellow is most known for the game King of Tokyo, um, which I must admit, I'm, I'm not particularly, I, I never warmed to that game very much. But what I like about Yellow very much is their aesthetic. They, 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 they have a real look that shouts out, this is a Yellow game. And specifically, they seem really concerned about how the games are going to look on the shelf. So they tend to produce lines of games. I mean, it was, I first noticed it with the game Biblios, which they produced to look like uh, it was a book. And it's got this sort of magnetic opening, you know, which is great because the game's about old sort of ancient texts and things like that. So it looks great. They then produced a line of games called um, uh, Tales and Games, I think it was called, with things like Little Red Riding Hood and... Um, uh, the tortoise and the hare and, and stuff like that for smaller children, which again looked like books when you stack them up along the shelf. Um, this game is the game, the, 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 the range that I particularly enjoy. This is their sort of mini, mini games range with Welcome to the Dungeon and Kabuki, um, Alamini Circus, Tempura, Candy Chaser. Um, I've always thought that Koba Yakawa, which is in exactly the same size box, I suspect if they, this, this slightly predates that series, but it would fit very well. It's the same sort of level of game. I just wish it was white, so it would look nice lined up on my on my shelf. Maybe it will in a future printing, I don't know. But this year they have um, Shot and Totten, which I mentioned before about uh, reworking old games and giving them a facelift. Well, this is Battle Line. Uh, originally was called Shot and Totten, an old Rainer Knizzi game. Ah, uh, really, really good game. I mean, we're talking on the level of sort of Lost Cities here, a two-player classic. But Battle Line had that really quite dry sort of artwork that 
never really appealed. It always felt like there was a discord between that and the and the, the the artwork and the sort of feel and tone of the game. So I'm really pleased to have a new new production of Shot and Totten, and then also that Renter Hero that I mentioned earlier that used to be Seventh, seventh Hero. Again, that's had a face list facelift and coming out as uh, rent a hero there's also a slightly bigger box game oceanos uh from antoine bowser that looks great a card drafting game pa grab a card pass them on and um, that style of game uh i'm sure there was something else another facelift diamond so i i have an older edition of diamond um i don't know whether i can justify buying a whole new version but it does look pretty diamond is the same game as ink and gold um, that, that sort of English edition, but this new version looks sort of just look really nice. As, as Yellow always do such a great thing with the with the artwork. Um, so Yellow, their identity is very much about the aesthetic, the look of the games, and also how they look on the shelves. So I'll definitely be visiting their booth, and in fact, there's probably more games at the Yellow booth that I'm excited about than any of the other booths. I don't even really know what Amigo is releasing at Essence Spiel this year, but I know that this is number two on my list of the, the, the booths that I will definitely be going to and I know that I'll be buying stuff. In fact, I know that I'll be loading my suitcase with games from Amigo because they are cheap, they are um, portable, they're generally unavailable outside of Germany, so you have to go to great lengths to get them from Amazon on Germany and sometimes they're unavailable, that sort of thing. And they're generally really, really good. I love speed cups and ringelding. The, the, these speeds to put together these cups, stack them, hit the bell, uh, or put the, the little rings on your fingers and then hit the bell. Brilliant games. I love the card games. Their collaborations with Friedman Fries with things like Stickmeister and Megastar. Um, I like all their... Um, you know, the numbered games like 23 and, and Hamster Backer is a very sort of traditional style card game. They do these bigger box games like Cube from Tom Lehman that nobody seems to know about. Um, tremendous, tremendous company. And, and this year, uh, I know that they have a, a two-player version of Bonanza. I know they've got a game called Nova, which a, a friend of mine um, uh, designed, although that's only going to be in German language, I believe. Um, I know that to be a very good game. So there's, uh, there's, I'm sure there's going to be a whole load of these little games. And even the ones that they don't produce this year, you tend to be able to find uh, these little boxes um, in the sort of bargain bins around the Essen, uh, Essen Fair. And they might only cost you three euros or four euros. So you can pick up lots of these little games that are perfect for sort of traveling and filler games. Brilliant, brilliant company, Amigo. I, I, I love their stuff. I wish it got into more into distribution in the UK, but unfortunately it doesn't. So Essen is my opportunity to fill up on that stuff. And number one on my list is Zock Verlag. Now, Zock Verlag uh, first came to my attention when I went to Essen because they have a big booth and, uh, and they have very sort of characteristic artwork, lots of wooden chickens and, and slightly sort of irreverent themes uh, and this sort of slightly ugly sort of cartoony art style, which I really enjoy, uh, and a good sense of humour. Now, they came originally from... Uh, their first game was the game Bandu by Klaus Zock, uh, and this game is a bunch of wooden pieces that you stack, very similar to an upcoming game, Junk Art, um, coming out from Pretzel Games, which also looks of interest at Essen. Now, Bandu was licensed to Milton Bradley for a while, and they sold you know, a fair amount of copies, and then it was dropped. But that gave the funds for Zock Verlag to form their company, uh, which has gone on to produce some of my very favourite games. I absolutely love the game of Toivel Komraus, a sort of bidding gambling game with no money changing hands. Brilliant game. I absolutely love the game Leglos, a party game where we're sort of creating images with little sticks and discs and other players are trying to guess what we're making. Excellent game. And then all these games behind me are also great. Now, at Essence 2016, I was kind of almost sad to be looking through the list because it, it was ruining the surprise for me, what would be there when I turned up. But the games that caught my eye were a game called Dreams, where we're building a constellation, sort of cooperatively building it, but one player doesn't know what we're building and they have to disguise the fact that they don't know. So it's similar to a game like Spyfall or a fake artist in New York. And what I'm seeing on this Essence Spiel list is that's another big trend. A lot of games copying <laughs> Spyfall and a fake artist in the same way that a lot of games copied The Resistance a few years ago. Um, when I say copied, I don't mean that as a pejorative. I, I, I'm sure that a lot of these games are going to be really good games developing uh, that idea and, and we will have a whole new genre of games created out of this, which is great. But there's also a game called Mea Culpa coming from uh, Zoc, which oddly for a game that focuses, uh, for a company that focuses on family and children's games, 
you have to visit brothels and, and courtesans and within this medieval sort of setting. Basically, you have to sin in all sorts of different ways in order to gain illegal goods, which you can then donate to the cathedral to gain victory points. It looks like a mid-weight sort of strategy game, similar to maybe something like uh, Mangrovia that they've produced before. But the theming just surprised me. Uh, there's a game set in the Alps, I believe. I'm, I'm guessing that just from the title, I don't know. But it's a game where you work in partnerships and you have to give signals to the other person without the other people noticing. So it might be winking or sticking your tongue out or something like that. Um, that looks like fun. And then a uh, abstract game called Kilt Castle, where we're stacking these little plastic pieces that look really, really attractive. So definitely I'll be spending lots of time in the Zoc booth. They've got loads of demo tables. It's a great place to spend time. And these games generally are just up my street, the right sort of weight, simple, not too long, but always with really clever me mechanisms and a great sense of humor. So that is my 10 uh, publishers booths that I'll definitely be visiting at Essen. I'll be visiting many, many others. And I should say, this is not a list of my 10 favorite publishers, although a lot of those publishers would make the list. Um, but, but this is specifically the ones that have got the games that I'm most interested in for this Essen fair. I'll report back to you after the convention and let you know how I got on, which of the games I bought, which ones I liked, which ones I didn't like so much maybe, um, and how I got on with my sort of meetings with the various publishers. There's probably a couple more vlogs before then, uh, but it'll be interesting to see whether my predictions for what is going to be good at this fair actually turn out to be the case. Anyway, thank you very much for watching my vlog. Uh, if you liked it, please subscribe to my channel, Adam's Board Game Wales, and follow me on Twitter, at Board Game Wales. On Board Game Geek, I'm Adam78. Thank you very much for watching. All the best.